What if everything important in the world got hacked? Would you do anything differently? What if airplanes, cars, space station, hospitals, cop shops, government agencies all got hacked? What if power utilities got hacked? Massive oil installations got hacked. Would you do anything differently? What if OT software vendors were financially liable for the vulnerabilities, the basic vulnerabilities in their products, like default credentials and hard-coded keys? What if, as a result of common operating platforms and a push for less people in automation, and out of necessity to do their job, the security professionals learn more about the operations than the operations professionals? What if IT security knew more about OT than the OT professionals? Please welcome your S4X19 program chair, Dale Peterson, to the S4 main stage. Good morning. Thank you very much. I believe that the people in this audience, the 529 people from 27 different countries, will play a large role in creating the future of ICS and the Industrial Internet of Things, and importantly, securing these systems and the data. Now, you have the experience. You've been doing this for one year, three year, five, maybe even 10 or more years. But I also believe that success will come in a way different than what you expect, and that we're actually just at the beginning of our journey. So we've traveled a long way from 2001 to 2015. We traveled through the imaginary air gap to security by obscurity. You know, no one will attack us because they don't understand our system. To threat denial. It's never happened before. It's not going to happen to us. And then we've had to fight back against the SCADA apologists and quite frankly both asset owners and vendors who use the fact that this will take decades to fix to do nothing. But finally in 2015 we reached a place where a minority of the ICS security community, but a large enough minority, actually was committed and believe that we can and will secure industrial control systems. And that small group has gotten larger over the last three years, which is good. And we've made some progress, and you're going to see that progress on the sponsor stage with software and hardware products. You're going to see case studies on this stage. You're going to have conversations with your fellow attendees, and you'll recognize you actually have made progress from 2015 to now. And that's a good thing. And now we're 17 years after 9-11, and we'd like to think that we're close to the summit, that our journey is reaching an end. And that could be true if this was maybe 2006 or 2008, but it's 10 years later, and a lot has changed in those 10 years. We're at a point now in 2019, where our journey is actually just beginning. We've reached the first door, we've gone through it, we've reached the first level, we've trained hard, we bought our provisions, we've packed up, and we're at the foothills here. We're just actually starting our journey. 2018 was the year of cyber hygiene. And this is a term, some of you know, I really don't like this term. I think it's an inaccurate term. But it's often used to indicate good cybersecurity practice on any network. So things like asset inventories, user and password management, hardware configuration, things of that nature. And of course, I, I almost forgot, patching. Everyone loves patching. And what's happening is internal and external internal and external auditors in asset owners 
are actually going through and testing industrial control systems to this cyber hygiene standard and reporting it up to executive management. And this then becomes the metric of success. This is where all the resources are being applied. And that's a little strange because when we think about it, these resources are being applied even though we know that the asset owner enterprise networks are not having great success applying cyber hygiene. And we know even when they're doing it, they're still being compromised. And further, we know that if cyber hygiene is applied to ICS, it's not going to stop a moderately skilled attacker who's directly trying to attack you. We're in this race right now to essentially pedal faster, to do more, do more, do more, to achieve cyber hygiene, not so much to reduce the likelihood or the consequence of an attack, but to deal with maybe reputational risk. For example, if the company gets hacked, they can at least say, well, we had our systems patched. And from a personal standpoint, I know many of you are being measured on these things. They're actual metrics. But we're not going to actually create the future, solve the problems, if we simply work harder. We're not going to have success if we use a superhuman effort to actually achieve this cyber hygiene. Because what's happening as we're doing this, and we're making progress from where we were, we're moving forward, but the problem is the Peloton, the herd, the ICS attacks, and the business and technological environment, it's accelerating faster. We're falling behind. We're getting dropped. We're seeing ICS attacks increase in numbers, in numbers of threats, in the sophistication of the attacks. We now have examples where the attackers are getting smart and they know how to change the process. They actually know now to go after our safety systems to cause high consequence events. And imagine that when the criminals figure this out, when they figure out how to make money from this, and who doubts that they'll figure that out, then we're gonna talk about the threat environment accelerating very rapidly. But it's not only the threats and attacks that are accelerating faster than we're moving, it's also business and technological factors. I mean, you know that things are becoming more and more interconnected. There are some amazing cloud services being offered. They're being developed and we're just at the start of that, but they're gonna provide significant benefits to asset owners, benefits so large that they're going to be implemented. We're seeing connectivity from asset owners to vendors to suppliers to integrators to service providers and customers. That's all increasing. And of course, you know, we are, we're getting a proliferation, a, a very quick increase in terms of uh, controllers and sensors, low cost controllers and sensors, what I'll, I guess, sloppily refer to as Industry 4.0 or IIoT. Okay, this is all moving faster than we are moving and we're falling behind. And the way we're approaching it isn't working. Even if we work harder, we're gonna fall further and further behind. So we need to come up with different answers and different approaches. So that's why I had my three really smart friends up here start off the event with what if questions. Because one way that you get better answers and different answers is you ask different questions. So if we're asking questions like, how often do I need to patch the servers in my control center? You know, it's not a terrible question, but we're not gonna really learn a whole lot from that. But if we start to ask better questions, it's gonna make us think in different ways and come up with different answers. So how about a question like, how am I going to secure my system when 90% of my operators are replaced with machine learning in a cloud? Or this is a question I really like. How can I significantly decrease the existing security burden on my OT team? If that was a primary driver, as, as opposed to thinking, how can I just get them to care more and work harder? We start asking different questions, we're gonna get different answers. 
So the, the theme of this year is create the future. And S4 has always been about advanced, bleeding edge thoughts. We've always tried to show you what's new, but we took special emphasis this year in trying to put people on this stage and the other stages who would really challenge you, who would have ideas that you hadn't heard before and might be ideas that immediately you, you would say, that makes no sense. And you're not gonna agree with all of them because we have specifically and intentionally put ideas that are diametrically opposed on the same agenda. So in theory, they both can't be right, but maybe I'm just not clever enough to figure out how they work together. When we put together S4, we're really clear on who should come. We say, we design this event for a certain type of person. And we even say, you know, if, if, if you feel this other way, then maybe S4 isn't for you. There's a lots of, lot of other good events. All are welcome. We put it in writing, but all are welcome. But, you know, you coming here tells me that you're future focused, that you're looking for new ideas. You're open to new ideas. That's why you come to this event. And what I want to encourage you to do over the next three days here in Miami Beach is when you hear something crazy on stage, um, and, and I do this and everyone does this, you might just give it a second thought and then tune out. Or you might have a knee-jerk reaction that that doesn't work. I'd like you to actually do the opposite. I'd like you to think about it. I'd like you to try to twist it, flip it, maybe come up with an opposite idea, expand on it. Actually take it seriously, like some of the questions we heard up here. You know, just assume, what if that is a valid question that my job is to answer that question? How would I do it, even though it seems impossible? Similarly, you're going to have a lot of time with your fellow attendees. Um, we all know one of the benefits of coming to any event, and especially this event, is you, know, you have 500 really smart people in a similar field, and you're going to have a lot of time to talk to them. I want to encourage you to limit the amount of time, we'll never eliminate it, but limit the amount of time you talk about, you know, complaining about all the problems you're running into and the current state of things. And really focus on your own what if questions. And try to build on other people's what if questions. Because if we get one person to do it and another person to do it and another person to do it, it will really build and we'll start to have some really great discussions here, and we'll really be in, begin to make some progress. I will tell you that uh, S4 2007, the first year we had it, since that first event up till now, there have been many ideas, projects, companies, efforts, organizations. A lot of things have been created around the S4 pool, and so, these discussions you have actually do make a difference. And you know, come up to me in a break and I'll tell you, you'd be amazed at some of the things that actually started here just in these informal discussions. So I encourage you to get fully involved in this and help create the future of ICS security and OT. Thank you very much and enjoy the show.